come along to your private cook along here. I'm on your boys from Good Food Nutrition. And I'm gonna show you today is again a nice little weekend recipe. But I know we've been doing an awful lot of sort of uh, meal dishes and dinner dishes recently. So I thought I would change it up a little bit today. Weather's not so great outside, so probably more of these are indoors, maybe pottering around the house, sitting and having an afternoon cup of tea or whatever takes your fancy. So with that in mind, I thought today we would do a really nice baked dish. So you'll see now on your screens is, today I'm gonna to be making my really lovely date walnut scones, okay? So quick, so simple to, to make as well, with a lot of ingredients that you probably already have in the cupboard. And if you don't, I'll give you plenty of ideas how to mix and match it around so you still be able to use the recipe as like a basic recipe and then change it up as well. So again, is we will have these made and baked out on the table, ready for your cup of tea, cup of coffee within 30 minutes. So first of all, is just run through a couple of the ingredients as well. Oh, first of all, before I run through anything, is you want to be preheating your oven to about 200, 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, get that really, really nice and hot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn it down slightly once we get the scones in the oven. So really, as I say, is the uh, ingredients in this one, I have no doubt you're going to have some of them or maybe all of them in the cupboard. We're just going to be going in with some self-raising flour. I have some baking powder, a little bit of sea salt in there for a bit of seasoning as well, because you really want that in there as well. We're going to be, uh, our wet ingredient is going to be just normal milk, or you can as well, you can use oat milk, coconut milk, almond milk, whichever you like. So if you don't take dairy or you're lactose intolerant or anything like that, just, there's loads of plant milks out there, and I guarantee they all work brilliantly when it comes to the baking as well. So, in terms of the flavor of this one is, I'm going to be adding in, I've got some gorgeous sort of walnut halves here, you'll see there. And I'm gonna be adding in to give a fabulous little crunch to this song as well, as great flavor as well. Also as well is your walnuts, great source of vitamin A as well, and brilliant for brain health as well. So while you're enjoying your song with your cup of this afternoon, you can also know you're feeding your brain as well. And then a little bit of sweetness in there, because I don't have like sugars or anything like that to my scones, is we're going to be going in with a half here little handful of just dates, okay? And they've been pit about, so the little stone is out of the middle of them. And what we're going to do is we're just going to chop them nice and finely. We're going to toss them through the flour as well, and that is going to give some wonderful flavours going on as well. Okay, and then on the top of it again, to give that lovely glaze, is I'm just, I have a beaten egg in here, just normal large egg in there. And then we're just gonna brush the tops of the scones again to give it that gorgeous um, sort of, um, how do you say, sort of brown golden color to it as well. Okay, and then also some of our normal butter as well. So we're gonna get going, because we're gonna take about 10 to 12 minutes to cook. And I'm just gonna start to weigh the stuff out. So while they're cooking as well, guys, is I'm gonna get through some, maybe some little alternatives if you don't have those um, flavorings that I've mentioned as well. So be a little bit adventurous when it comes to making your scones as well, because you know you have your basic recipe and then chop and change it to suit whatever your tastes are. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with some of our self-raising flour. So I have my weighing scales underneath my uh, bowl here. So you want a good big wide bowl because you're gonna be getting stuck in there and um, for rubbing in the butter as well. So actually, before we start, I'm just gonna quickly wash my hands. And then we'll get going. Okay, so in we're gonna go 220 grams of our self-raising flour. So now I sort of go between um, different flour types as well. Sometimes I'll go to supermarket brands, but often I choose um, really good flowers because the way they're milled and the way they're done, they do actually affect the flavour as well. Is and often then I I also um sort of try a few gluten free recipes as well. But today I thought we'd just go bog standard normal scones to make it easier. Into this we're going to be going with our little about half a teaspoon of our salt. So again I'm just using my pink Himalayan salt as per usual, just to give it a little bit of flavour. Sprinkle that in. Into that, then we're gonna be going with one teaspoon of our baking powder, okay? And the baking powder, again, 
is going to be the rising agent alongside the self-raising flower that gets everything moving in the oven and make sure your scones aren't really flat, gets them nice and sort of uh, risen and puffed up as well. So into that, we're just going to give everything a little mix around, making sure the baking powder is all mixed straight in with the flour. And again, just using, you know, you can use your hands for this, you can use your whisk for this, whatever you fancy yourself. Okay, just making sure that it's well distributed throughout the flour as well. So this is a good one, actually, you know, if you are inside on a rainy day, sort of over the next week or whatever, with your kids, with your grandkids, or even just for yourself as well. Now, this is where we're going to start to add in our flavorings, okay? So I'm just going to put my bowl to one side there. Okay. And the flavorings in this, as I say, is I'm going to be using about 50 grams of our walnuts. And I'm just going to chop those down. I don't want them too small, so I'll probably chop them each walnut into about a third, okay? But I like lots of them in there because um, they do add a lovely texture to the, the scones as well and a lovely flavor as well. So we'll just pop these, the last, last few. And we're just going to go straight into our bowl with them, okay? Get all those little crumb bits as well from it, because they're all part of loads of other flavour in there as well. And then for our, our uh, dates as well, I've got 50 grams of them. Again, you, I'm just going to chop, start to chop these down, a bit like the walnuts. And again, is with the dates as well, is you can, I mean, there's many different types of dates. Is I will often use ones called medjool dates. And these are, you can get these in the supermarkets or order them online, but they are um, slightly different from the other ones in that they are really, really caramelly type. So these ones kind of like when they dry them down and stuff, is they're a little bit harder, but the Medjuro dates are, um, they're really soft, juicy, but they always have that caramel texture to them. So if you can get your hands on those ones, I would always say is go for those. The flavor in them is far superior as well. So again, just do another one or two of these. And again, I'm just cutting the dates down the middle and then just chopping them through, okay? So give them into nice small little bits. And I think that's probably more than enough there. So that's about 50 grams. So again, with the dates, straight into the bowl. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this chopping board now to give myself more room. Okay, now with the bowl is once you have your dates and your walnuts in there is what you want to do is you want to start mixing it. And the reason I say that is that the walnuts are fine, but the dates, because they're really sticky and soft, is that unless you mix them through and kind of separate them, you're going to end up when you cook your scones with like big balls of dates inside. Them. So what I tend to do is get in with my hands. And then I kind of use the flour in the bowl to kind of separate all the little chunks of dates. So just straight in and just rubbing them between your fingers, okay? And as I say, all of that's doing is it's separating all those chunks of kind of sticky dates, okay? And it just makes sure that, that they are spread throughout the whole recipe or throughout the whole uh, batch of them as well. Because uh, otherwise, as I say, as you're going to end up, they are really sticky. And they're going to clump together. And the next thing is, is somebody's got about half the dates and somebody else has none of them. So these are lovely. So there's quite a, quite a good bit in here, 50 grams of each. And that is quite, quite a good bit. So, I mean, I wouldn't be having much more than that. But, if, you know, if you find that it's too much, if you're making it yourself at home, is that just cut it down. Even put maybe the full amount of nuts in there and maybe even about half the amount of dates. But again, totally up to yourself. And I'll give you plenty, as I say, when these go into the um, in the oven now in a couple of minutes, I'll give you plenty of ideas for substitutes as well. So these are looking well. Okay. Now, back onto the scales. We're just going to go and set your scales back to naught. And then what I'm going to do is with our butter, is I'm just going to get us, on, uh, on the butter front, I, I'm just going to get us 50 grams of butter, so you only need a little bit. So again, is just getting the butter is, I am actually just cutting it into small little chunks, you'll see there, tiny chunks, and then we're just going to go in and weigh in 50 grams. So you do not need very much, 
but also as well is with your butter, it needs to be nice and cold. So even, um, you know, is if your butter's thick now and you need to chill it quickly, is stick it in the freezer and then you can grate it into your, um, your flour mix afterwards and it just makes it a little bit easier. But let me just get in this 50 grams, one more little bit. And that's it. So just get rid of the butter as well. And then with our hands, is we are just going to get stuck in at this point and we're just going to rub the, the butter into the flour almost as if it resembles breadcrumbs. So with, just go in nice dry hands. It's just nice and high in the bowl is you're rubbing in all of the butter. Okay, so you're going to be going in there and you'll feel the nuts and everything in there as well. That's no problem at all. You can as well, if you like, is, I mean, if you find it easier, is you can rub the butter in before you add the dates, and before you add the walnuts as well, okay? So it doesn't really matter. Because they're cut nice and small, um, it's not going to make a big difference. And all you're looking to do is nice and high in there, is you are rubbing in the butter until it is like fine breadcrumbs, okay? So this is a good one if you have the kids baking with you, um, is getting them to this bit because it's great like even for the little motor skills as well, using the fingers as well, is that um, it's great for the butter also keeps them in mischief as well. So if, you're, if they're in the kitchen and you're not sure about the baking and cooking, is this way will keep them out of mischief but will also give them a job to do. So again, just rubbing everything through here. And the reason I say the butter needs to be nice and cold is that um, if the butter isn't, instead of it actually rubbing in, it's just going to basically melt when you're using your hands as well. Is that it's going to melt into the flour, okay? And that means then it's not actually going to, um, you're not going to get that nice fine breadcrumb texture, but instead you're going to get melted butter into it. Particularly, I mean, I'm okay because I have cold hands, so it works very well for pastry and these type of things. But if you are somebody who has warm hands, is you need to be very careful and say is that you're getting that butter rubbed in before it actually starts to melt within your fingers. So again, is we're nearly there with this. I'm going to show you then what it looks like. And it literally does look like breadcrumbs, just with little lumps, the walnuts and dates in there. So we're nearly there. Just give another couple of seconds just to make sure. And all you're just all you're doing is gently going through it. And just making sure that um, there's no lumps of butter left. That's it in a nutshell. Because as I say, we want that butter to be uh, spread throughout it, but not to melt through it, because it could change the whole texture of the scones then. And I think, I think we're nearly there. Can't see any more little bits in here. A couple of little bits, actually. We just get through them. But it's, it's, it may, I love making these type of things because it's actually quite therapeutic. So sort of, I find baking or baking bread and stuff quite calming. So if you are prone to, you know, a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of stress in the house as well, is even doing simple little things like this in the kitchen. Great for your mental health as well. Great for your motor skills, your dexterity and your fingers as well. But also as well, is such a really nice to just create something as well. Yeah, that's... That's done. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like there. So you can see there is you've kind of got that consistency of light bread crumbs. And then also as well, you have all of those dates, those walnuts and all in there, and it's looking great. So we get that back onto the scales, get our measurements on, and I'm just at this point going to go to um milliliters that's it and then just some i just use full fat milk all the time i don't use um skimmed milk at all because we're taking some flavor in as well so we're just going to go in here with about 130 milliliters so we'll start off with 100 or about 110 and then we'll just see where we're at with that because as i would always say is that you know you can add in but you can't take away liquid. So always put a little bit in there and see if you need any more. So tricky with this one, I was always taught growing up as well, and by my elders for baking, is just getting a knife, normal dinner knife, and just gently combining the liquid through it, okay? And the reason, again, is that, you know, when you're making scones, um, you, you, can, you can end up overworking the dough. 
Okay, so in this case, is you just want to gently combine the wet into the dry ingredients. And if, if you're sort of going hell for leather or you the, the hand mixer or whatever going mentless, you end up overworking it. And what happens is you end up in the, the texture of the stone is quite tough. Whereas what we're looking for is really just very, very fluffy and very light. So another little drip in there, and that will do us. And all it's doing is just combining. So that's all you just want to bring in, basically just to combine together, no more than that, okay? And that is looking So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get a little bit of flour, because I want to flour the surface where we're actually going to sort of roll out the sauce. And a little dusting of our flour. And then the trick is as well is get your scone cutter, dip it into your bag, and that also dusts that as well, okay? Now we're just going to turn out our scone mix here. This is looking lovely. And then because we want to get every little bit, we're just going to scrape down the bowl because we don't want to leave any little bit behind. Now, I'm just going to get rid of my bowl. And then with a little bit of extra flour on top, teeny little bit, little sprinkling, we are just going to very, very gently start to bring this together. Okay, not going to overwork it as I said, otherwise we're going to end up with a really tough dough and we will know once you you um, you bite into it because it doesn't have that kind of fluffy texture to it. So with this one is literally, we are just gently bringing it together until it kind of forms a bowl like that. So okay, a little bit more flour on it, a little bit more flour on the top. And then you can, of course, use your rolling pin but to be honest with you, what I tend to do is flatten it down using my hands is just flatten it out, okay? Making sure that it's actually, you know, still floured underneath, okay? And if you want, with your rolling pin, is you can roll it out a little bit, but again, be careful not to over roll it, because otherwise it's your scones going to be too flat. So taking your scone cutter into the bag of flour, Okay, push that down a little bit. And then just going round the edges. Now, a little trick for when you're actually cutting your scones is that don't, uh, when you're cutting them, you don't want to turn the cutter back and forth. When you do that, you end up with an uneven rise on your scones, okay? So you end up with that kind of wonky lob side. So the trick is, so that if we're going to go around the outside, then go in the middle, so we want to get as many as we can out of just um, the first batch here. Just with your hand, press down. Okay, so it's just, there's no turning, no nothing, okay? And we're just gonna pop them there. Again, with this side, down the same way. Round here, so you'll get quite a few. And the reason that I say is I'm trying to get as many as possible out of the first slot, is that the more you roll it, uh, the more you're working the dough, okay? So again, just push down on those, push down on those. And then we're just going to gather up the other ones again. So you want to work that dough as little as possible. And every time you gather it in again, you're working it again. So again, just barely, barely working it, okay? So again, on this one, take that one out. And then the last one is probably just this. And just, just barely, barely bring it together. The last one's always a bit wonky, but actually the taste is lovely. So pop it into your scone cutter there to shape it. And then just push it out. Okay. Now, I'm just going to wash your hands quickly. Now, we're going to get these onto our um, our baking tray nice and quickly and get them into the oven. So, I have here is I just have my baking tray with a silicone sheet. Okay, and I find silicone sheets are great for, because you don't have to line the trays and nothing sticks. Okay, so they're just like a rubber sheet, you'll see. And I have used them before um, when demo went here as well. So, taking your scones, give them a little bit of room between them. Just put these up front here where you can see them. Is We've got uh, seven out of this, so that's not too bad. It's a small, look, yeah, seven. 
So we're just going to pop these up to the top here and then the last one here. Okay, so you can see the size of them is they're a nice little scone. They're not like these massive big ones, which are too big in my opinion. This is just a nice little bite size, okay? So in there we go. And then what we're going to do is our beaten egg here, we're just going to very gently brush the top of them. And again, just being careful not to have the egg running down the side, okay? When you have the egg running down the side, is that also affects the rise on it. Okay, so you just want it across the top a little bit and it gives that beautiful golden colour. And on the last one here, and that's it. So they're going to go into the oven at about 210 degrees. Pop them straight in. And I'm just going to set the oven there for 10 minutes on those, okay? So, just move a few bits to the side here. And I think that's it. So basically, it's just to recap there on what we did, okay? So they are our date and walnut scones, okay? Now, you can, you know, if dates and walnuts aren't your thing, of course, is you can mix, or mix and match around what you put in there as well. Sometimes you'll see your recipe now just up on screen there if anybody wants to sort of take a note of it as well. But again, is that if you, if you were looking at this video and you decide later on, yeah, I'm quite fancy making those as well, is all of the videos, including back videos, are all on the Destination URI um, Facebook page as well. And all of my videos are kept in a playlist. And what I'll do is I will pop up the link to that playlist afterwards, because it means as well as that you can go and find all the videos in one place. So if you're, if you're thinking of perhaps um, something I cooked maybe a week or two ago is you'll see them all in the one place. Okay, so I'll pop that up later on. So with your sconces, if you don't fancy the date and walnut, you can always try something like um, fried cranberries and orange zest. Tastes beautiful, okay? You're going to get a little bit of sweetness from the orange zest as well. You can also add in, if you want it, uh, instead of the walnuts, is some chopped pecan nuts. Bacons are like, again, they've got that beautiful, um, sweet, almost caramel flavour as well. Absolutely delicious. So you can add in some pecan in there. If you fancy adding in a little bit more sweetness in there, is you can add in a bit of pecan and cinnamon, okay? And with the cinnamon, is even something like half a teaspoon of cinnamon. It's going to give that sort of, um, it's going to give a different type of flavour in there as well. But again, it's because cinnamon, um, the, 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 the way of the spice is that it does add a bit of sweetness as well without actually adding in the sugar. So if you're watching sort of your sugar intake or you like your baking but you don't want to be kind of piling in gas sugar and stuff with brown sugar, is adding cinnamon into like um, into cakes, into scones, things like that as well. As it does add a hit of sweetness as well, but it also helps to kind of reduce those sugar cravings as well. With these scones as well is, now, because I don't add sugar in them, I don't tend to sort of um, swap them more for, you know, I think people sort of make like white chocolate and cranberry and stuff like that. Is, it's almost too sweet uh, for me on this recipe. This one here I find is more like a savoury recipe, okay? So it wouldn't, because it doesn't contain any sugar in there, is you're better off sticking with your nuts. So even if you wanted to add in some little sesame seeds in there as well, some flax seed in there as well, was wonderful. So if you want to even say you were using the pecan nuts instead of the walnuts, you can add in, say, 50 grams of your chopped pecan nuts, and then you can add in maybe about one tablespoon of ground flaxseed, okay? And again, that's going to give your scones a lovely kind of nutty texture to it, or kind of nutty seedy texture as well. And again, is you're getting all the real goodness there from the ground flax as well, your omega fats as well. So you're getting to enjoy a really tasty scone, which you cut back, but also known as there is great goodness in there as well. So that is, let me just check the timer on these. Oh, we're down to seven minutes already. So just recapping on what we did in there is we had 225 grams of our self-raising flour, okay? We had one teaspoon of baking powder, which is our extra raising agent. And you'll see now your recipe up on screen there if you want to take a note, is your baking powder is your extra raising agent on top of your self-raising flour. So in your self-raising flour, you do have a, a degree of raising agent, 
but not enough on its own. So the set, the baking powder is going to go alongside the self-raising flour to give it that sort of lift. We have a little bit of our lovely pink Himalayan sea salt. Again, there's more um, sort of goodness in there as well. So you can see that, you know, by just tweaking some of the little bits that you're putting in your baking recipe, you're already putting more goodness in there. So it's actually a win-win situation. And then with that is we added in 50 grams of our chopped walnuts. We added in 50 grams of chopped dates. My favourite, love them. And as I said to you about the dates, is if you can get your hands on the medieval dates, which are kind of like bigger dates, about that size, um, with a big stone inside them, just squeeze the stone out of them and chop them down. They are really, really um, caramelly and really juicy dates, okay? They'd be my, they'd be my um, I suppose, my go-to or my favourite if I'm baking as well. Beautiful. So we added in those, the walnuts and the dates in there as well. And then we just gave that a bit of a mix around with a whisk, okay? And that was just to make sure that everything was very well combined. In order for the dates not to stick together, use the hands, get in there, make sure they're sort of um, well sort of um, mixed and distributed in the flour mix. And then into that, we added 50 grams of really cold diced butter, okay? So if your hands, if you, if you are lucky to have good circulation, your hands are very warm, is put, your, put the butter into the freezer, and then when you're taking it out, it's just grate it onto the flour mix, okay? And the reason we're doing that is that we want the butter to actually rub into the flour mixture and not melt into the flour mixture, okay? Because then you'll end up with a, um, a kind of soggy scone mix, okay? And it just, won't, it just won't have the same effect at all when you bake it. So you're rubbing that in until it's nice breadcrumbs. And then what we're doing is we're adding in about 100, maximum 130 milliliters of milk. Okay, so I start off with about 110 milliliters, and then I just see if do we need any more? Okay, because depending on the flour you use, is some flours take more liquid, some flours take less liquid, and it really depends on the brand and who's made the flour as well. So as I can say to people is, you can always add more liquid, but you can't take it away. Okay, and if you put too much in, the whole the whole recipe just tends to go a little bit awol. Okay, so then just using a normal um, eating knife, normal dinner knife, is we're just very gently mixing it in the bowl and bringing it together. And this is, as I said before, is that when it comes to your scone mixtures, and even things like, you know, shortbread mixtures and cookie mixtures as well, is that um, you don't want to overmix them. When you overmix them, you are creating a very tough dough or a very tough sort of um, mix, okay? And you'll taste that in the finished product, is it will taste um, more chewy and it won't have that lovely, fluffy sort of texture. And when it comes to your scones is, the idea of scones is you can just literally break it in half and it's just crumbling, okay? It's not falling apart, but it is crumbling. Whereas if you are in there and you're kneading the dough as well, is you're gonna end up with a really chewy, dense, tough dough for your scones. So that's not long to go. So again, very, very lightly with your knife, is just mixing it around very, very gently until it comes together. And then just out onto your flour tabletop, press it down and using like, that's probably like a medium scone cutter that one is. I'm rubbish at math, so I couldn't tell you what size it is. Um, so again, is trick is don't be turning it, is just uh, pop it on the scone mixture, quick bang on it, and straight through. Okay, and then bake those in the oven for uh, about 12 minutes. Yeah, about 12 minutes until they're lovely and golden brown. So I'm just going to give them a quick check. So give me one second. They look absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, nearly ready to go. Now, just to give you a few more ideas as well, is if you are, you know, I've been doing these. Um, demos now for a few months now during lockdown as well. So I'm hoping that you have enjoyed the, um, the dishes that you've seen as well as we've done a variety as I've done some baking and then I've done a lot of sort of speedy lunches, and speedy meals as well. And then your weekend curries as well, batch cooking, all that type of thing as well. So I'm hoping that you have enjoyed that uh, over the last few months as well is 
And as I say, it's all of the recipes um, for all the previous um, cookery demos, they're all held in the playlist for me. So I'll pop up the link to that. And it means if you do want to go back, if you do want to see the ingredients, or just even see the recipes, they'll all be in one place. So I'll pop that up as well. And then the other thing I just wanted to say was, um, you know, I on my website, which is goodfoodnutrition.co.uk, there is loads of lovely recipes, some for baking, some for lunch, some for dinners. You know, there's lots on there as well. Is that? And if you are sort of bored of what you're cooking and you fancy sort of breaking out or doing something a little bit different, I'm always trying to sort of include new ingredients and stuff. There's loads of recipes on goodfoodnutrition.co.uk. Skip on there, have a little look and see. And if you have any questions on any of the recipes on there, is by all means, is you can send me a message on the website as well. You can book a call with me as well if you fancy that as well. Lots of information there. But I also as well have um, my closed Facebook group, which is called The Fabulous Foodies, okay? And this is primarily, it's for women, okay? It's, it's I suppose, centered ground primarily for women's health. And it is loads of ideas for tweaking your own diet as well for health benefits. So even things like dishes I have cooked is that I will give lots of ideas and tips on, um, I suppose, just adding or tweaking recipes just to add a bit more nutrition to as well. So if you're a lady or a female and you fancy sort of learning a bit more about food for health or, you know, if there's health issues that you have, the Fabulous Foodies is a great, um, it's a great group. As I say, it's focused on women's health. So um, mainly the posts they put up there, the recipes they put up there, or even the tips and advice goes towards sort of women's health. It could be hormonal health. It could be menopausal health. It could be thyroid health as well. So there's loads in that group as well. So if it's something you're interested in, I will pop up the link as well underneath the video. Um, and again, it's, it's somewhere else to get more recipes more ideas on food as well, and hopefully a little bit of advice as well on just improving your own health as well. So let's just check these. These are just about good to go. So I'm just going to take these out of the oven now and just show you what they look like. So I just want to check, obviously, that they're nice and golden brown as well. And you'll know because um, if they're very, very white looking, your oven was probably too low. And if they are black, you know your oven is too high, and there's nothing unfortunate to help you with on that one. So let's just have a look at these. And I'm just going to give those. I'm going to give those one more minute, okay? Just to come up and rise up another little bit as well. So as I say, is if you are interested in making the recipe, is We've just popped up the recipe with all the ingredients, the method and all there on screen now. So even if you want to take a screenshot, and it means you'll be able to take them later on. But they are just, a, they're a really nice, simple dish to make as well. But also as well as, as I say, is if you're looking to get in the kitchen yourself, be it just for calmness to do a bit of baking, but you don't always want to be making like chocolate cakes or sweet stuff as well. Maybe you're watching your weight, okay? Um, maybe you went mad baking over the lockdown as well as, this is like a bit of a healthier version, like a, a no sugar, um, no sugar sauce as well. Okay, still taste, guarantee it tastes absolutely gorgeous. So I might do a lot of dishes with no sugar or low sugar and stuff like that, is but I don't compromise on taste. Okay, taste has to be there. If I'm going to take out the sugar, there has to be the taste still there as well. Okay, so let's get these, let's get these out of the oven and show you what they're like. And these are looking absolutely gorgeous. So they're quite little, mini little scones. I'm going to lift them up and show you there, but I'm going to try not to obviously spill them on the floor as well. So this has happened to me on a few occasions where I've lifted stuff up, and the next thing is it's all over the floor. So if I can show you these here, they are, let me just try not to burn the handle off myself. <laughs> I'll show you these here. So these are, you can see, absolutely lovely. And they're nice because they are just like, you know, rather than these um, these scones that are basically the size of a baby's head, and you're absolutely, they're like a meal in themselves, is that I don't really like that. These, because you might fancy a second one of these. 
So these ones are nice little bite size as well. Go absolutely lovely with if you if you are the type if you are a person who makes your own jam or you want to make your own jam as well. Some lovely homemade jam on these, absolutely gorgeous as well. Or if you're that way inclined and you're looking to put together an afternoon tea, can I suggest lovely local jam or your granny's jam or your mom's jam, whichever it is as well, and some really nice clotted cream as well. Is some good coffee, some good tea, and I can guarantee you that's 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 a nice little afternoon tea as well. So guys, that is my date and walnut scones today for Friday afternoon. So if you do decide to make them over the weekend, is do let me know by popping a comment either below the video or even stick a comment on my own Facebook, um, my Facebook page, which is Good Food Nutrition. And I would love to hear how they go. If you're already in my fabulous foodies and you do make it, stick a picture of them up there in the closed group because. Although I'm making them here for you, I love to see other people making them. They don't have to be perfect. Mine aren't perfect by any stretch if you have a look at that one. It is, but it's not about that. It's about just um, having fun with your food, enjoying your food, not denying yourself as well. But it is extremely therapeutic. It's a very calming when you're baking as well. Is, and you don't always have to be making chocolate cakes as well. You can get just as much pleasure in making things like this. So guys, thank you so much for joining in today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend no matter what you're doing. With a bit of luck, the sun will come back out as well. And again, if you do make them, let me know. Pop a picture through of the songs that you make. Have a great weekend, everybody. And I will see you all on Monday afternoon again at 3 o'clock. Take care, everybody. And you actually you can see there on screen a playlist of all the past videos as well, guys. So just before we go, so if you are interested in have a little look, but I stick up the link to will say to you how to troll around the Facebook page.